the equitable doctrine of confidentiality protects information disclosed in circumstances that reasonably import an obligation to not use or not disclose that information without consent. In most professional and commercial circles, it's pretty obvious when something should be kept confidential. But the duty of confidence can go beyond that. For instance, we now know it's also owed by someone who should know information given to them can reasonably be expected to remain private and protected. But what if disclosure can be justified on the basis that maintaining confidentiality would actually be against the public interest? In the motherland, the confidentiality dilemma has resulted in the birth of the public interest defense to disclosure. This means that when faced with an unauthorized disclosure of confidential information, English courts must balance the public interest in maintaining as against disclosing that information. Oh, do you mean like Naomi Campbell or all that? Actually, exactly like Naomi Campbell and all that. In 2003, the Daily Mirror published an article about the supermodel's drug use, accompanied by photos of Campbell leaving a rehab clinic taken without her knowledge. Given she'd been denying that she was a recovering addict, Miss Campbell was very publicly unhappy with the Mirror. I'm very publicly unhappy. Campbell appealed to the House of Lords on the grounds that the newspaper had breached an implied duty of confidence to her. The House of Lords found the Mirror liable and said a duty of confidence arises where the defendant knows, or ought to know, that the claimant can reasonably expect their privacy to be protected. Crucially, the Lords were not satisfied disclosure of Campbell's confidential information was in the public interest. Yeah, right -o, but we only care about Australia, the UK's beloved colonial offspring. Life is simpler in Australia. Well, that's not quite right, because in Australia, our judiciary hasn't made its mind up about the public interest defence, saying it is not so much a rule of law as an invitation to judicial idiosyncrasy by deciding each case on an ad hoc basis as to whether, on the facts overall, it is better to respect or override the obligation of confidence by reference to matters of social or political opinion. You what, mate? Okay, so the public interest justification recognises On one this. hand, the public needs to know confidential stuff is going to be kept safe. On the other hand, we should be informed of matters that are our legitimate concern. So by imposing a balancing test, the courts have a mechanism to deal with cases on their merits. The problem is, though, what does public interest actually mean? The English test requires the courts to evaluate the public interest for every case it hears. Now, that's a lot of leeway for a judge to put their own spin on any given scenario. The legendary Michael Kirby is our greatest judicial proponent of the public interest defence. Justice Kirby, in the Spycatcher case, Spycatcher, what a sick name, said the defence requires something of serious concern or benefit to the public, not just something that captures the public's interest out of curiosity. In that judgment, Justice Kirby was rebutting what is known as the narrow iniquity rule, which basically states that the confidentiality doctrine can only be broken if someone has been told about a crime, and the person who committed the crime is relying on confidentiality to stop it going public. Just as William Gummow championed narrow iniquity, he hated the public interest defence, and he reckoned it was based on flimsy historical and doctrinal foundations, mixed to produce a curious melange without an indication of the significance of what was being done. Justice Gummow's iniquity rule operated as an exception to the duty of confidence, uh, rather than a complete defence for someone who breached it. Fellas, please. There is a third option, somewhere in between the public interest rule and the iniquity rule, which requires both a satisfactory public interest defence and an iniquity which allows the courts to balance whether an equity being disclosed would be in the public interest. On this thinking, you wouldn't need disclosure of an actual crime to justify breaking confidentiality, just a just cause of some kind. So Australia's stance on public interest justification is up in the air, but we may be heading towards a wider acceptance of what you could call a broader iniquity rule. Yeah, cheers for the explanation, mate.